how much you buy it for. They're not making any more houses out there. Like, what was your down payment on that? Because, I mean, you can do stand-up comedy for a very, very long time, but you don't want to do it when you're, like, in your 80s, right? All right, man. Well, thanks for coming on, bro. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. So... How long have you been in San Diego for? About a year. Okay. We moved here in September of 2022. And now you're, now you just close on a badass house. Or, yeah, yeah, I gotta ask you about that because I was really lucky to have this capital even now with stand up. but I don't wanna just have it be something where there's like, I'm not building any assets. Instead of like, oh, three years later, I'm like, oh, that was nice when I had that money. Cause I mean, you can do stand up comedy for a very, very long time, but you don't want to do it when you're like in your eighties, right? Settle down. Man, that's a good question, dude. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to be financially stable where it's not just touring. And now you're, now you just close on a badass house in Wind and Sea or Bird yeah, Rock? Yeah, Wind and Sea, like it's uh, probably closer. It's between Bird Rock and the like south part of La Jolla. So it's, I would say it's probably more Wind and Sea. More Wind and Sea. Yeah, like walkable to that, that beach right there. Got it. That's awesome. Yeah. How much you buy it for? Bro, so I don't even, I don't know if my the realtor that we worked with is gonna like this or not, but it was listed at 1.4 and we got it at 1.2. Really? Yeah, man. Wait, that's a really good deal out there. I don't see things trading for less than two million out there. Dude, we started out looking really high, and with interest rates and everything, that number slowly started to go <laughs> down and down. Yeah. Like, all right, this feels good. This feels nice. So we gave the number that we were like really happy with this number. It was kind of a like a, a shot in the dark. We weren't sure if that was going to be good or not for them. And then my cousin calls me the next day, who is my my realtor, and uh, he was like, "Hey, bro, they accepted." I was like, "No way, That's let's do it." Sick. So you want to invest in more real estate, though? That's cool I to do. hear. I do. It's man. the best yeah. way to put your money, man. You know, I was going on tour. My income varies year to year. So I was like, let's keep building that like portfolio. And at some point, yeah, I don't want to be dependent on touring either. Well, dude, you got a great start. When you buy in an area like Wind and Sea or Bird mm -hmm. Rock, they're not making any more houses out there. Anything near the, the water in, in California. Yeah. You have what's called the Coastal Commission. It's like a committee of older people, older white <laughs> folks. I, I can see the part in your head where you're like, do I say this? Yeah, do I say this? But you know, they make it very hard for developers to build mm -hmm. near like in beach cities. So the supply and demand in beach cities is very favorable towards demand. And when you can't build there, it creates a perfect storm for a new owner like yourself mm. to sell that property for significantly more when you mm. sell it five, 10 years down the line. We noticed like things would go on and then sell really quick. Always. Always, because everyone wants to be by the beach. Who doesn't? The weather's the best by the beach. The quality of life is the best, like you said. What I'm trying to get at is it was a great investment because they're not building near the beach. California as a whole, there's a huge housing crisis. Like there's not enough housing out there. When you buy in a, in a class A area like that, like you're going to do great. What do you recommend like as far as holding on to it or selling it like strategy wise with it? What do you recommend? I'm always opportunistic. Real estate's all numbers based for me. So wherever I can get the highest amount of return I'm gonna do, is that keeping it? Is that selling it? Is that refinancing it? I always look at those three options. You'll never go wrong holding it for a long time because sure. the location's amazing. What was your down payment on that? Down payment was, we did 20%. Let's call it 300 grand, yeah. somewhere around there. So let's say you got a crazy offer tomorrow for 2.2 million. Let's say you made a million bucks in two months of holding it. On 300 grand, if you made a million bucks, you like more than tripled your money. If someone's willing to pay such a high price and your return on the money you put in, like if the returns outweigh what you can make in the future now, then it makes sense. But here's what I would do. How long do you realistically see yourself living there for? At least the next two to three years. So let's say in two to three years, it's worth 2 million bucks. What's cool is when you move out of the house and you claim it as a rental property and there's a tenant living there and renting it from you or even a short-term rental, someone's Airbnb being it. Once you do that for at least two tax years, you can sell it and not pay any capital gains tax and put all the profits into a bigger property. So you can put it into like a fourplex or whatever you want. That's how I've grown my portfolio really quick. It's called a 1031 exchange. Have you heard of it? I think I, I saw one of your videos on it. <laughs> like when I'm hearing this, I'm like, yeah, yeah. It's the 1031 exchange, tax free exchange. So you have to claim it on your tax return as a rental for at least like one or two years. Okay. Because let's say you were to sell your house and cash out, you have to pay capital gains, right? So you have to do at least two years and 
have it as a rental property. If you were married, you'd have a capital gains shelter of 500 grand, but the way to pay no tax is to do the 1031 exchange. Gotcha, okay. Just to make it clear, you're deferring those taxes. So if you do cash out at the end of your life, you will have to pay the taxes. The gains will follow you from the first property you sold. So this is why the term swap till you drop was started because you should always swap and never cash out. And when you do pass away, your heirs will inherit that property and they'll have the step up in basis and they can sell it without paying any capital gains. So you don't pay taxes, you don't pay capital gains, you take all your profits and you roll it into a bigger property. So if you keep rolling that money for 10, 20 years, that money could be in like a 20 unit apartment complex yeah. with 20 tenants paying I remember rent. seeing that in one of your videos too. That's where I followed you because I was like, oh, it's so cool the way that you're doing it. You know, it's like it's those little little tips that help so much. Like yeah. here's like the, like my mentor told me this and it stayed with me forever is like, when you're 80 years old and you are not working at all, would you rather have income from four tenants or from 400 tenants? If 400 people are paying you rent versus four people, you're gonna make a lot more money. You're gonna have a management company handling it, so you're very hands-off, right? But I'm all about having as many tenants as possible paying me rent by the time I'm retired to where I'll never have an issue with money. That's yeah, so cool, man. I love this stuff because I was like, I was already a fan of yours. Really? Yeah, man. man. I was like, I was watching your stuff, trying to figure out how to buy a house. I was even telling my cousin some stuff. I was like, you gotta check this guy out. Like, he seems really smart about the way he's doing it. Like, you're young, Asian dude also. It's just yeah. like, there's so many things that were groundbreaking with what you're doing. Yeah. So it's cool to hear that you guys, you know, and I definitely believe in it enough to keep building, but I want to be smart financially starting now Yeah. to build for the future.